Hi class, in lesson 6.2 we are going to be estimating with percents. Learning targets for today will be estimating percents as fractions and decimals, writing fractions as percents, identifying equivalent forms of fractions, decimals, and percents, and finally ordering fractions, decimals, and percents. Uh, one key term in lesson 6.2 today will be benchmark percents. If we take a look at problem number one on page 404, it says when you estimate with percents, it is easier to work with those you are familiar with. You know that 100% means one or the whole, and 50% means half. A laptop computer uses an icon of a battery on the toolbar to show how much power is left in the battery. When you glance at the icon, you can get a good estimate of how much battery life remains before you need to recharge the battery. If you take a look at number two, it says estimate how much battery power remains by writing the percent under each battery icon. I would like you to do letters A through D with your group members. Here are my estimates for letters A through D. For letter A, you should have 75%. Uh, letter B, 50%, letter C, 25%, and letter D, right around 10%. Remember, if your estimates are just a little different than mine, as long as we are in the same ballpark, uh, as far as the uh, battery power that remains, you should be good to go. Let's skip over to page 406 and take a look at number 4. It says to estimate the shaded part of each model and write it as a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. Make sure that your fraction is in simplest form. So go ahead and answer, letter, or answer letters A through F on page 406. Let's take a look at letters A through D first. Hopefully you are using the uh, word bubble from the helpers at the bottom of the page and thinking about how you can evenly divide the models to determine the percent that is shaded. Uh, for letter A, you should have two-thirds, uh, 0.66 as your decimal, and 66% as your fraction. Letter B, one-fifth, two-tenths as your decimal, 20%. Uh, letter C, three-fourths, 0.75, 75%. And for letter D, four-fifths, eight-tenths, and 80%. If I take a look at letter E, that would be one half for my fraction, five tenths for my decimal, 50%. And letter F, again, referring back to that word bubble, how can you divide the model in order to help you determine the percent shaded? Well, if you take a look at letter F and you break that up into equal size little triangles, you can see that there's eight total triangles. Three of them would be shaded in, three eighths is your fraction, 375 thousandths would be your decimal, and 37 and a half for your percent. Let's move on to page 407 and take a look at problem two. We are going to be talking about benchmark percents. Number one says to use your calculator to determine the percent of each number. Go ahead and do um, letters A through L for number one. Here is what your answers should look like for number 1, A through L, A, 28 hundredths, B, 2.8, letter C, 2 and 34 hundredths, letter D, 23 and 4 tenths, letter E, 0 .0085, letter F, 0 .085, letter G, 0 .0586, letter H, 586 thousandths. Letter I, 9,872 ten thousandths. Letter J, 9 and 872 thousandths. And for letter K, 10 and 852 thousandths. And for letter L, 108 and 52 hundredths. So for letter M, it says, what patterns do you notice? And then for number two, and number three down at the bottom, it says to write a rule to calculate 1% of any number. 
and number three says to write a rule to calculate 10% of any number. So go ahead and see if you can figure out any patterns for letter M and try to come up with a rule for number two and number three. Hopefully the patterns that you noticed were first for the uh, left column in which you were trying to find 1% of each of the numbers and that would be letter I and letter K in the examples that I still have showing. Um, you were just moving your decimal point to the left two places. You can see that you started with 98 and 72 hundredths. You moved it over two spots to the left to get 9,872 ten thousandths. Uh, for letter K, you had 1,085 and two tenths. You moved it over two spots, two places to the left uh, in order to get uh, 10 and 852 thousandths. For the 10 percent then, if you look at letter J and letter L, again, you are now moving the decimal point one place to the left if you were trying to find 10 percent of a number. So I started off with 98 and 72 hundredths. I have 10% of that would be 9 and 872 thousandths. If I have 1,085 and 2 tenths, I would have 108 and 52 hundredths would be 10% of that. I'm moving my decimal point to the left one place. So for my rules for number 2 and number 3, um, a rule to calculate 1% of any number, I can multiply any number by uh, 0.01 in order to calculate 1% of the number or I can move the decimal point two places to the left when multiplying any number by 1%. Uh, the rule then not too different when you're trying to calculate 10% of any number. I can multiply any number by 1 tenth, 0.1, to calculate 10% or I can move the decimal point one place to the left when multiplying any number by 10%. So remember those rules when you are trying to find 1% or 10% of any number. Let's turn to the top of page 408 and talk about benchmark percents. A benchmark percent is a percent that is commonly used such as 1%, 5%, 10%, 25%, 50%, and 100 percent. You can use benchmark percents to calculate any whole percent of a number. So take a look at number four. It says state each relationship. Go ahead and answer letter A through letter E for number four. If we take a look at A through E for number four, 50 percent is half of 100 percent. Uh, for letter B, 25% is a quarter of 100% and is also half of 50%. For letter C, 10% is one-tenth of 100% and one-fifth of 50%. Letter D, 5% is half of 10%. And finally, for letter E, 1% is one-tenth of 10% and one-fifth of 5%. So let's take a look at number five then down at the bottom of page 48. Using your knowledge now of benchmark percents, try these percents mentally. Try to calculate the value of each of these using your knowledge of benchmark percents. Go ahead and do letter A through F. Here are the answers that you should have had for letters A through F. Uh, $300 for letter A, that would be 100% of $300. Uh, letter B, 1% of $300. Remember, we're moving that decimal point over two places to the left, so $3 would be your answer. Letter C, half of $300, uh, $150. Letter D, 25% of $300. Well, if you have 50% of $300, that would give you $150. Half of 150 then uh, would be $75. 25% is half of 50. So again, using your knowledge of the benchmark percents that we talked about above. 
Uh, letter E, 10% of $300 would be $30. Again, just moving your decimal point over to the left one place. And letter F, 5% of 300. Well, if you look at letter D, 25% of $300 is $75. And we said above that 5% would be uh, one-fifth of 25%. So $15 would be your answer for letter F. Let's turn to page 409 and take a look at the problem up at the top of the page. It says, Akuro eats at the Eat and Talk restaurant and decides to leave a 15% tip. Akuro says, I can easily calculate 10% of any number and then calculate half of that, which is equal to 5%. I can then add those 2% values together to get a sum of 15%. So what I'd like you to answer with your group members is number six. Do you think a curl's method is reasonable? And how much should she leave for a tip of 15% on $16? If we take a look at number six, a curl's method is definitely reasonable. Her method is to use benchmark percents. So she calculates 10% of 16, which would be $1.60. And 5% of 16 then would be uh, 80 cents. If she added those two together, she would have to leave $2.40 for her tip. So 15% of $16 then would be $2.40. Let's take a look at number seven then. It says, what is 15% of each restaurant check total? Explain how you calculated your answer and round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Remember, we are dealing with money here. Now, as far as your explanation goes, if you want to tell me what 10% uh, and 5% is of each of the totals, uh, like the work that I showed on the previous problem, uh, that will be good enough uh, for me in terms of your explanation on how you calculated your answer. So go ahead and do letter A, B, and C. Here what your answer should look like for A through C for number 7. 10% of $24 is $2.40. 5% uh, of $24 is $1.20. If you add them together, you get $3.60. For letter B, 10% would be $3.26. Half of that would be $1.63. If you add them together, you get $4.89. And for letter C, 10% of $47 is $4.70. Uh, 5% would be $2.35. If you add them together, you get $7.05. 15% of $47 is $7.05. Let's turn to page 410. Up at the top it says, you can determine any whole percent of a number in your head by using 10%, 5%, and 1%. So for number 8 it says, how can you use 10%, 5%, and or 1% to determine each percent given? Explain your reasoning. So go ahead and do letter A, B, and C with your group. Here is what you could have come up with for A through C for number 8. How can you calculate 18% of a number? You can determine 10% of the number and double it to get 20%. Then you can determine 1% of the number and double that to get 2%. And if you subtract the 2% from the 20%, you're going to get your 18%. Uh, how can you calculate 25% of a number for letter B? Uh, determine 10% of the number and then again double that to get 20%. Then I can take half off of that 10% which is 5% and add the 20 and the 5 together in order to get 25%. Last one then for letter C, how can you calculate 37% of a number? Uh, determine 10% of the number and multiply it by 4 to get 40%. Then you can determine 1% of the number and multiply it by 3 to get 3%.
and the last thing you can do then is subtract that 3% from the 40% to get your 37%. Let's finish out the lesson today on page 411 with number 9. It says, estimate each using 1%, 5%, and 10%. Uh, let's take a look at letter A together. We'll go over the steps as far as how to come up with 27% of 84, and then I'm going to let you finish uh, letter B through E with your group members. So let's take a look at letter A first. The first thing we want to do for letter A is get an understanding that we are estimating. So 27% is pretty close to 30%. So if we figure out what 30% of 84 is, we will be uh, pretty close in the ballpark of uh, determining what 27% of 84 is. So the first thing I'm going to do then is try to figure out what 10% of 84 is. And I should know that all I have to do is move that decimal plate decimal point over one place to the left. So 10% of 84 is going to be 8.4. If we round that 8.4 to the nearest whole number and we figure out what 30% of 8 is going to be then, uh, 8 times 3 would give me 24. So 27% of 84 is approximately 24 for our answer. So I want you to go ahead and finish up uh, letter B through E on page 411. Okay, let's take a look at these one at a time for letter B, 43% of 116. I know that 43% is pretty close to 40%, so 40% 40 of 116 is uh, what I'm trying to figure out. 10% uh, would be 11.6. If I want to round that then to 12, uh, and I can multiply that by 4 since I'm trying to find 40%. So uh, 48 uh, would be your answer. 43% of 116 is approximately 48. If we take a look at letter C, 1% uh, of 389 would be 3.89 if we would double that. 2% uh, would be right around 8. Obviously, 100% of 389 is 389. So if we subtracted the 389 from 8, uh, we would get 381 for our answer. So 98% of 389 is approximately 381. For letter D, we know that 77% is pretty close to 80%, so we're trying to find 80% of 1,400. 10% um, of that would be 140. We can multiply that 140 by 8 then, since we're looking for 80%. Uh, when you multiply 140 times 8, you get 1,120. So 77% of 1,400 is approximately uh, 1,120. And finally, for letter E, 12% uh, of 1,248. 10% uh, would be 124.8. 1% would be 12.48. Uh, that would mean that if we doubled that, uh, we would get right around 25 for our answer. Uh, that 124.8 can get rounded to 125. If we added those together to get our 12%, uh, that would be approximately 150. So 12% of 1,248 is approximately 150. That is going to be it today for Lesson 6.2 on Estimating with Percents. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.